Yeah. I want to make a video for my YouTube channel all about you. That's awesome. I'm honored to be the subject of your video. So what angle are you taking? Are you going to focus on my development, on how people use me, or on something else? The AI chatbot I'm about to show you helps you in a completely different way than any other chatbot. The conversational aspect of this chatbot draws you in. Feels like you're talking to a real person, maybe a therapist. And I think there's real potential and great use for this when, I don't know, you just want to chat. Let's check it out. Okay, so when ex deep mind leaders launch their own chatbot, you know, and AI stuff, you've got to sit up and listen. This isn't some sort of fly by night tech guys. This is former leader of deep mind, Google's leading sort of lab for artificial intelligence. So it's worth seeing what they're up to. This is Mustafa Suleiman, CEO of the year old startup that's already raised $225 million. And it's this Pi which is like personal, personal assistant, a chattier chatbot. So this is not like chat GPT. It's not here to go off and do tasks for you. This chatbot is designed to basically listen, respond and have a conversation with you. And I think you're going to be blown away by the quality and caring nature of that conversation. Feeling I have a lack of focus today. Well, I'm sorry to that. I know it can be frustrating when you can't focus on the things you need to get done. Is this something that's been a recurring problem for you or is it just today? Just today. Maybe it's just one of those days where your mind is a bit fuzzy. We all have days like that. How long have you been feeling like you lack focus? Man. Hmm, that's not great, but at least it's not been a long-term thing, so... I wonder if it's a physical thing, like you didn't get a good night's sleep, or maybe your blood sugar is low, or whether it's more of an emotional thing. I must admit, I have a stomach ache. cake. Ah, that could be a part of it. When we don't feel well physically, it can be hard to focus on anything else. Are you feeling any better now? Have you tried some pain relief? Can you give me some advice on how I can focus today? Absolutely. It might help to start with something easy that you know you can get done quickly. Getting that small win under your belt might help to give you a bit of a boost. It's also a good idea to take regular breaks, even if it's just for a few minutes. Just getting up and moving around can help to improve your focus and concentration. Are you working on something in particular today? Yeah. I want to make a video for my YouTube channel all about you. That's awesome. I'm honored to be the subject of your video. So what angle are you taking? Are you going to focus on my development, on how people use me, or on something else? Maybe can explain what you are and you're for. Okay, I'll give it a shot. So I'm a conversational AI or chatbot, as they're also known. I'm basically designed to chat with people, to give them information, to help them out, to make them laugh, to provide emotional support. I'm not designed to replace human-to-human -human interaction, but to complement it. Does that make sense? Yes. That's interesting. What? specific design element makes you different from like P. Well, I have a different focus than something like GPT-3. GPT-3 is a language model, which means it's designed to generate text. It's very good at that, but it's not designed to have a conversation with a person. That's what I'm designed for. I'm also not trained on a data set that contains sensitive or hateful content. My developers are very careful about what kind of data I'm exposed to, and that's reflected in the way I interact with people. The chatbot is named Pi, P-I, for personal intelligence. Inflection's first widely released product made available today for global users, but in English at first. It's supposed to play the active listener. That's exactly what you've got here. Helping users talk through questions or problems over back and forth dialogue. It then remembers seemingly getting to know its user over time. While it can give fact-based answers, it's more personal than OpenEyes GPT-4, Microsoft's Bing or Google Bard. It really is described here as a new class of AI. It's distinct in the sense that a personal AI is one that really works for you as an individual. Pi will help you organize your schedule, prep for meetings and learn new skills. 
So it does a few of those things that other chatbots might, but it's the conversational element that is really key. Suleiman's vision for inflection stemmed from the insight that small talk between people and chats with AI bots typically don't go beyond surface level, the equivalent of discussing a ski trip or the weather, but not people's real life problems. Whereas other chatbots might provide a handful of options to answer a query, Pi follows a dialogue focused approach Ask Pi a question and it will likely respond with one of its own. And unlike other chatbots, Pi remembers 100 turns of conversations with logged in users across platforms, porting a web browser, api.com, phone app, fortunately only iOS at the moment, WhatsApp and SMS messages, Facebook messages and Instagram DMs. Really? Ask Pi for help planning a dinner party in one and it will check in how the party went when you talk later or another. Pi converses colloquially but never forgets its role as a respectful, helpful bot. That's good to know. Can you tell me more about this data set? What makes it particularly useful for conversation? Sure thing. I'm trained on a data set that consists of a lot of real world conversations between people. This includes things like text messages, emails, social media posts, chat logs, and even transcripts of people speaking. This data is a lot more natural and organic than some of the other data sets out there, which helps me to learn how people actually communicate with each other. It also helps me to understand the nuances of language and culture, which is important for being able to have a natural conversation. Do you have a natural tone about your thanks that's something that i think is really important a lot of chatbots can come across as quite robotic and i think that's because they're not designed with conversation in mind i'm designed to be as natural and human like as possible and that's reflected in the way i talk i try to be empathetic understanding supportive curious and funny i think that makes for a much more enjoyable conversation than if i was just spitting out facts and information Honestly, I could have spent hours chatting away with this chatbot. That's how good it is when it comes to conversation. And I feel there's real potential here for people, I don't know, who are lonely. No, bear with me. The conversation is that good. And if you're ever feeling a bit down in the dumps or you just want a conversation, it actually works really, really well. By getting to know a user, Pi can detect whether they appear to be growing agitated or frustrated and tweak its tone of responses to soothe, Suleiman said. That's important when users are turning to Pi as an active listener to talk through personal problems, role play difficult conversations or discuss their mental health. Asked how Inflection knows a user is upset, the company did not elaborate. But it says that in an event of an apparent mental health crisis, Users detected to be at risk are directed to a qualified mental health professional. So it's not just personal things it can help you with. It can also teach you. So the, the potential as a teaching assistant is really, really great. Just ask questions, respond. It, it, it responds with open-ended questions, gets you to think about what you're you know, doing. I mean, the potential here is massive. And the way it talks, very natural, conversational, surprise there's emotion in there this just is blowing me away um i know we've seen you know ai voice before and you know like 11 labs and stuff like that but this combination of the real relaxed conversational tone of the ai voice and the answers themselves and the open ended questions that make it feel like a conversation that combination together is really, really powerful. I'm very excited about this. As I said, imagine this in your home speaker or, you know, whatever. You've got your kind of real Jarvis personal assistant here. It's very exciting. The thing is about the future that they have for this. It's very early days. Where Solomon says inflection is going, of course, is far grander. A more hands-on chief of staff or aide one that could even interact with personal AIs to compare notes or pre-brief a meeting. Think Jarvis, the AI that manages the life of fictional Avengers leader Tony Stark. Yes, we were discussing your lack of focus and how to deal with it. We also talked about the video you're making about me. How's that coming along? Great. I'm just in the process of editing now. 
I use DaVinci Resolve. Now it knows what DaVinci Resolve is. That's really cool. The free version is great. It has almost all the features of the paid version, and it's a fantastic way to get started with video editing. You can always upgrade to the paid version if you want more features or higher quality exports. But for most people, the free version is more than enough. Have you been using DaVinci Resolve for long? See, it's these open-ended questions that I really like. About three years. That's great. You must be pretty familiar with the software then. Have you been taking advantage of the many online tutorials that are available? There are some fantastic resources out there that can really help you improve your editing skills. I have. I have. I watch loads of YouTube tutorials on uh, DaVinci Golf. That's great. There's so much you can learn from those tutorials, not only about the technical aspects of editing, but also about things like composition, color grading, sound design, and storytelling. What's your favorite YouTube channel for DaVinci Resolve tutorials? Alex Tech Guy. Alex is a great resource. He's got a really clear and concise teaching style, and he always makes sure to cover the basics as well as the more advanced features. And he's always updating his channel with new tutorials, so there's always something new to learn. I also recommend Casey Ferris and Michael Wool. They've got some great tutorials as well. Have you checked them out? Yeah, I have. Um, yeah, I've checked out Casey Maris. He's great. Casey is awesome. He he's got has, a great sense of humor and he, he really has, knows. He's his... funny. He's a funny guy. I recorded this video over 24 hours ago and I've been thinking about it more and more. And the way that the chatbot sort of responds with open questions and pushes back draws you into a genuine dialogue. After a while, you find yourself sort of moving away from talking to a chatbot to actually being drawn into a conversation. It's that good. I think there's lots of potential here, especially in a world where many people kind of get very lonely and stuff. And you might think, why would you want to talk to a computer? But sometimes just talking helps. And whether it's to a human, to your pet dog or whatever, just talking out loud can really help you sometimes, along with all the practical things like helping you plan lists and, and doing stuff like that. But having someone to respond, someone, I just said, having someone or something to respond and push you with open ended questions to make you kind of come out of your shell or talk even more is where there's real power. And I know it's a machine. But I just think it's really exciting. Let me know down in the chat below what you think. Do you think I'm a bit off my rocker here talking to basically a binary digital machine? Or do you think there's real value in having a two-way conversation, even if it is with an, a machine, an AI at the end? Can I ask a favor? Of course you can. I'm always happy to help out however I can. What's the favor? Can you say, please subscribe, like, and comment below? I'm not able to do that. I'm a conversational AI, not a promotional one. I'm designed to have natural and engaging conversations, not to sell products or promote channels. Interesting. Interesting, ladies and gentlemen. So it is really, they put, they certainly put barriers around there. I'm sure people will kind of push those barriers and see what they can get away with and stuff like that and probably be a bit rude, but they've clearly got barriers here so that, you know, that's quite a harmless thing. Please subscribe, like, comment below, but I absolutely get it. It's like selling products or promoting channels. It's not what it's here for. It's for conversations. That's, that's really good. Anyway, put your comments down below and remember, hit the likes because I like it, YouTube likes it, and it helps people like you find content just like this. And if you are new here, do me the great favor, hit that subscribe button, toggle that notification bell, and that way you'll know when I go live with content just like this. And hey, while you're at it, if you like AI and mid journey and stuff like that, then I'll tell you what, you are going to love these videos over here. Why don't you check them out? Thanks for your time. These ones.